So in this segment, we're going to do um, kind of a reaction, I guess, to a different biases video where he talks about, you know, kind of some of the infighting within Labour. And he's very, in my opinion, I think he's a bit uh, disingenuous um, in some of the arguments he makes, um, especially when he claims that, you know, Rayner wasn't sacked. She was promoted. Yes, she was promoted. But Miss Rayner did not deny she had been sacked from the position. But, you know, that's for her job as um, I think she was like chair and some other things, campaign coordinator. So she was sacked. And then I think that it made a real stink and, you know, Starmer was forced to promote her. We also have enough kind of briefings to know that Starmer looked like he wanted to demote Annalise Dodds. This was before Annalise Dodds was demoted, by the way. So we know that this person obviously has decent sources. Annalise Dodds, Lisa Nandy, John Ashworth and Nick Brown. From that list, we know Annalise Dodds was gone. He wanted to get rid of Lisa Nandy because apparently she was... Um, she might have been disloyal because she ran against Starmer to be leader. And we also know that Rachel Reeves was actually promoted to um, Shadow Chancellor of the Exchequer. Um, you know, I'm not going to go into the specifics about Rachel Reeves and, you know, my kind of issues with her. But what we do know is that, um, you know, people didn't know what Starmer stood for. Um, whose fault is that? Is that the campaign, um, is that the campaign coordinator's fault? Uh, partially. But is it the fault of Starmer who actually had no real policies? Um, yes. So we're going to actually just review his video. And I'm going to explain the areas where I have big disagreements with him. Um, this is not an attack on um, a different bias on Phil. I hope it doesn't come out to look like it's an attack. But I have a big disagreement with him. And I feel like he is being disingenuous. I feel like he isn't telling his audience the truth. And you could argue that what is the truth? Is it, you know, is my truth the truth? Um we can argue that all day, but I'll, you know, I've explained why Starmer was, I mean, Raina was sacked. It's pretty evident that she was sacked. And, you know, Phil denies that, you know, this video was recorded um, yesterday. And obviously he does his video on a schedule, so he's a bit ahead. So he probably didn't see this article, but that's why you don't make certain statements unless you know for sure, which I, I'm guilty of as well. But, you know, I will try and do corrections at some point. Um, you know, let's see if Phil does a correction. So let's go into the actual video party over the last few years cannot help but notice just slow down a bit that the previous leader and deputy leader had a rather fractious relationship so that was tom watson and uh, jeremy corbyn and they did have a fractious relationship starmer and rayner have been serene quite frankly rayner has backed starmer to the hilt as leader and starmer in return gave rayner senior roles within the party and he didn't have to. He also sacked her when things started going wrong, as we've seen already. So, you know, this, this argument he's making here, like they had some sort of symbiotic relationship where they worked really well together. I mean, evidently they did up until she was sacked. So, yeah. Rayner is the deputy leader. She's voted for by the membership. It's the one role within Labour, the parliamentary party, that the leader has no choice in. He decides all the other roles. That's the one he doesn't have a choice in. So she gets a seat at Cabinet, Shadow Cabinet, all the rest of it. So she already had a seat at the Shadow Cabinet because of her elected position. So Starmer getting rid of Rayner would have been difficult because she could have started a lot of briefings against him because she would have an inside scoop on things. So, you know, him giving back Rayner a position in the Shadow Cabinet isn't as generous as it looks because she would already be there as she's deputy leader. So, you know, kind of, I think, a different bias again, being a bit... Mm. But he chose to give her other roles as well. And they've both put on shows of unity for the public that should actually be an inspiration to the rest of the party. But reports of tensions between the two have spilled over this weekend, though you notice it's their allies rather than the people themselves stirring. You know, it's childish mates rather than the people themselves. OK, again, this is where he's very wrong here. Who do you think told the press that um, Rayner was fired? How would her friends have known that she was sacked? Because we have confirmation that she was sacked. How would her friends have known? She obviously told them. Maybe she knew they would start briefing the press. Maybe she didn't. But his argument that these are just childish people is um, very wrong because it's obvious what Rayner's intent was. When you brief um, the press a certain story, you're doing it to either help someone or do damage. And it's clear that Rayner was trying to do damage by leaking these stories because it created a massive stink on Twitter. So when she was sacked, she got her job back the next day. I mean, she got a promotion the next day because by briefing the press, it created a massive stink on Twitter and amongst, you know, Labour members. So this argument, again, he's making here, I think is very disingenuous. 
But so what? Any two intelligent people are going to disagree about things. You get any two intelligent people that might generally agree about certain things, like, for example, Rayner and Starmer both agree that we should actually have a Labour government. I mean, that's great. If you got me and Tony Blair in a room, I'm sure he and I would agree on, you know, there needs to be, uh, the next government needs to be a Labour government, but we're going to have massive disagreements on policy, etc. You know, this argument, you know, is very, again, it's, it's just not, it's not very intelligent, especially for a guy I respect so much. But they are going to disagree about things as well. If there were no tensions at all, if I was, you know, being told that even by insiders there's no tensions, they're completely in tune with each other, I would worry that one of them doesn't care. I'd also be worried one of them's in a potential, uh, they're, they're in a kind of echo chamber and they're a bit too um, nice with each other. They should have some disagreements, but, you know, what are the main disagreements? She, you know, is it that she didn't do a good job as campaign coordinator or is it that no one actually really knew what Starmer stood for, as Rayner even mentioned? And that was something mentioned on the doorstep as well, that people, you know, the top, um, the top issue was that um, people don't really know Starmer or know what he stands for. So whose fault is that? Is that not Starmer's fault for not getting out there and actually giving policies and telling people what he's about? Or is it Rayner's fault for not telling people what Starmer's about, despite the fact that she probably doesn't know what Starmer's about because no one does, apart from maybe Jenny Chapman? They are both charged with driving Labour towards electoral success for the first time in 20 years. I'll remind people, come the next general election, it will have been 20 years virtually since Labour won an election. And it's important that they both realise it's important. Of course they're going to disagree. Like, it turns out now we've discovered that my part... I mean, this argument he makes here is so stupid. It's unreal how stupid it is. And once he makes it, I'll tell you why. ...and I disagree when it comes to DIY. She doesn't agree with me, for example, that any problem can be solved with a hammer. You know, like I, I was putting the blinds up in here recently in the studio. And we were having real trouble with them. I wanted to get one of my hammers out. Oh, I have a selection because you don't use the same hammer for everything. That'd be silly. You have different hammers. She disagreed. No, 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 no. Eventually, I won out because it wasn't working. I used a hammer. All the blinds are up now. I only broke one. And there have been other times when she's been right. We don't argue. We don't row. We just... Yeah, because you're in a relationship, pal. If you argue and row, you're going to end up breaking up. With this relationship is different because one is elected by the party and the other is also elected by the party. Starmer can't get rid of Reina. She's always going to be there until she's, you know, um, you know until there's another, uh, uh, what's called, deputy leadership race. Again, this is a very stupid argument because these people have been elected into their positions. No one elected for you to have um, to be to have this person as your girlfriend and you're not stuck with her if you start rowing with her you're going to end up breaking up if these two start rowing with each other it's going to be very public and people are going to know about it and you're going to have a lot of briefings in the press so this argument here is very very stupid disagree at times though it does tend to be just times when i talk about getting my toolbox out because she knows there's a load of hammers in it but people went ballistic Starmer said he accepts responsibility, but the, the narrative, well, the news that was coming out was Starmer saying, yes, I accept responsibility, by the way, I'm sacking Angela Rayner. How is that taking responsibility? But that's not what happened. He didn't do that, did he? That, that is absolutely what happened. He didn't make any such announcement. This was news leaked by someone trying to damage Starmer. Starmer instead was trying to say, right, we need to move people to more appropriate roles, ones that are best suited to them, and then they announce, oh, someone announces Rain has been sacked. Starmer didn't. Yeah, Starmer didn't because he didn't want to make a big stink about it. He probably wanted to wait a bit longer to make the announcement. But, you know, he did it straight away. The news was leaked straight away. And even Andy Burnham said he couldn't agree with it. Andy Burnham, you know, a guy who is Labour mayor, who is a mayor uh, in Manchester, who is a senior Labour figure, said, look, he can't support this. He can't support um, Rayner being sacked. So obviously... Uh, when this news got out, Starmer realised he made a massive blunder because he would not have the support of the party over this. So, again, you know, a different bias here. Come on, man. The bottom line is that Rayner has been removed from her roles as party chair and head of campaign and moved to shadow cabinet secretary. Now, it might well be that Starmer wanted to give her a less senior role and she insisted on something a bit meatier. I don't know. It might be true. Perfectly possible. But bear in mind, Starmer doesn't have to give her any role. But like I said, you know... I mean, he didn't. That's why he sacked her. 
And then, you know, someone obviously made a stink about it. And then he realized how bad a decision he had made. So, yeah, he didn't have to offer her any role. It looked like he didn't. And then he realized, oh, wait, if I do this, I'm in trouble. Whatever the internal bickering, all that can be seen from the public is that Rayner has been moved from head of campaigning and party chair to shadow cabinet office. That's a promotion. In anyone's books, that's a promotion. Yeah, mate, you know, if you're, you know, this, he works at a college, right? If you're, um, if your boss or whatever fires you and then you create a stink about it and all the, you know, you know, all the teachers and the students make a stink about it and they're like, oh, you know, no, no, we're, we're going to move you. You're going to be uh, a deputy head of a department. You know, are you going to be like, oh yeah, you know, everything's great. That's a promotion. I've been promoted. Or are you going to be like, bro, what? You tried to fire me. Like, what? Like, you are going to be a bit annoyed and confused at the situation. That's really what happened by the looks of things. Um, so again, another really bad argument. As I sort of tried to explain to someone yesterday, where she was before, her Tory opposite number was James Cleverly. Where she is now, her Tory opposite number is Michael Gove, one of the, the most senior people in the party. Michael Gove is senior in terms of his status, but in terms of rank, he's not very senior. He's a minister without... Uh, he's the uh, chancellor... He's the something of duchy. He's basically minister without portfolio. He has no official job apart from he's the government spin merchant. That's what he is. And, you know, giving Rayner the job of dealing with him might be a bit difficult because um, I'm not sure if if she can deal with a guy as slippery as Michael Gove. Not It's not meant as a criticism of uh, Rayner, but more kind of praise of michael gove because he's a slippery fish he's very slippery in the stuff he says and does so you know this is a promotion but she was sacked first he tried to get rid of her first it's like if you broke up with your girlfriend you know she starts crying you're like oh no no, no you know let's get married you know it just it doesn't make sense it's a promotion being party chair now it's an important internal role not downplaying the importance, but it's completely worthless for raising your profile in the public. It does nothing for her career. Her so why did he give her the job in the first place if Starmer was so concerned about her career prospects? Surely he wouldn't have given her that role in the first place, no? That's kind of something that Phil talks about a bit later, but, you know, making this argument again is a very stupid argument. Aspirations. Most members of the public wouldn't even know she was the chair of the Labour Party. Most members of the public don't know that James Cleverly is chair of the Conservative Party. That's true. But as Shadow Cabinet Secretary, she's now going to be the Labour lead on tackling Tory sleaze. Tory sleaze is going to be a central plank of Labour campaigning for the next few years. And she is going to be front and centre of that. That is a job for an ambitious Labour MP that they can really get the teeth into. As for the head of the campaign, if she wasn't always on Starmer's wavelength anyway, it was absolutely ridiculous that she'd be in that role. Because Yeah, he, he put her there. Like, obviously, if you're the head of a campaign, you've got to be able to make decisions. You can't be constantly undermined. But Starmer's... Her constantly undermined her, because it does, it does mention somewhere in this article, if we can find it. Here it is, you know, some shadow ministers tell us of the difficulties in getting access to the leadership, whether it is to give advice or get attack lines signed off. So Starmer was very hard to access. So clearly, um, he, Starmer would have issues just communicating with the geezer because he was very hard to talk to. Like, that was stated by shadow ministers. Like, come on, mate. The leader, he has responsibility for the results of a campaign. So obviously, it's not fair to let someone run the campaign that's going to make decisions you don't agree with, and then you get the blame for it. So we can't just... So why did he put her there? When he was vetting for these roles, why didn't he get someone who was more on his wavelength? And why is he not communicating with people within his sh um, shadow government? What's going on? Let someone else make decisions he doesn't agree with. So Starmer needs someone running the campaign that is on his wavelength. That Rayner has been removed from the post is not blaming Rayner or saying she can't do the job. Kind of is. When you've sacked someone from their job, which we know happened... Um, that is saying that you are not very good at, at your job or we have someone who's better at your job. That's what happens when you're fired from your role. Like, come on, mate. It's Starmer saying that he got the appointment wrong. That's true to an extent, but it also says that you're not good enough for this role. And that is what taking responsibility is. How does a leader take responsibility when something hasn't gone as well as you want it to? You don't just resign every time. Yes, if he loses a general election, he should resign. This isn't that. This is a year in. A year in. And actually progress has been made. It's like 
the the results everyone was going to how bad they were they won 10 out of 13 i think of, of the mayoral elections all right so when you vote for a mayor are you voting for Keir Starmer or are you voting for the mayor because this argument may seem unfair but when andy burnham goes on the doorstep do people say you know people that don't vote labor do they say i can't vote for you because of starmer or do they vote for him because i disagree with your policies not to mention that you know people mayors like andy burnham actually had policies that they ran on like nationalizing the buses so by giving credit to starmer over the mayoral, mayoral races is very unfair because these mayors ran on their own platforms Sadiq Khan had his own platform. Um, Andy Burnham had his own platform. There's quite a few other mayors that aren't as high profile as those two, but they're the ones that come to mind. So him making this argument is, again, very disingenuous. In terms of the local elections, where there was a net loss, yes, and the Conservatives made a net gain, but, but the loss was horrendous in 2019. They increased their vote share this time round. Yeah, I mean, when the loss is really bad, any kind of uh, you know uptick in voting um, to support the uh, Labour Party is going to look great. You know, our economy shrank by like 8.8% or something like that. So when it jumps back up, it's going to jump back up quite high because there's a massive amount um, of downturn. There's a massive downturn. Therefore, when things start ticking back up, it looks really good on paper. Like, again, a very disingenuous argument. And that's without any policies. That's without any policies. So, you know... The Labour Party have done better without any policies, despite losing seats like Hartlepool and, you know, multiple council, um, local council elections. So you admit he didn't have any policies. So what's the point of him then? Because Rayner even admits herself in this article that, you know, people didn't know what Starmer stood for. So without any policies, you're saying, oh, he did fantastically well when these mayors had their own policies, hence why they won. Like, come on, dude. Like, this is so, this is just awful right now. It's getting painful at this point. So what's happened here is he's matched people better to their roles. Yeah, if he loses a general election, if he continues to get it wrong, of course, he'll have to resign. But you don't resign after one year, after a few local elections, where actually you showed progress compared to where you picked it up. I mean, again, that's, that's a very low bar. And, you know, in, in certain ways, he didn't show progress because um, if, if you want to give him the success of the mayoral candidates, some of them, like Sadiq Khan, lost his vote share to an extent. And you could make the argument about Burnham. But again, you know, these guys did actually run on their own policy platforms. But the council elections weren't doing too good, were they? Certain seats like in Sunderland, they lost vote share. We lost Hartlepool. There's a chance that we might lose another another by-election coming up because one of the Labour MPs has been chosen to be has been uh, elected to be a mayor. So... Again, you know, are you going to criticise him then or are you going to give him more leeway? Unless there's an absolute disaster, and I mean a complete disaster, you give the leader a general election. And I don't disagree with that. I think Starmer deserves up to an election, but he's got to show something. You know, when the referee looks at you, you know, when you're a bit wobbled in a boxing match and the referee says, show me something. You know, that's what I'm expecting right now. He's been rocked. You know, arguably, you could argue with these results, uh, Boris Johnson has dropped him. And, uh, you know, the referee's looking at Starmer now saying, show me something, you know, or else I'm going to stop this. And that's what I'm waiting for. Show me, show us something. And that's what he needs to be given. Now, as for the shadow chancellor role, now I said at the time I couldn't understand Starmer's choice in Dodds, but I thought, well, oh, you know, maybe I don't know. You know, she's a red hot economist. Don't get me wrong; she's an actual economist. She's been bang on the money with everything she's said, and she's called out Rishi Sunak accurately every single time. I, I, I can't speak to all of that, but I can tell you she offered some some a decent policy proposal when she talked about the loan payments given to uh, businesses from the government and banks should be um, shouldn't be immediately paid back. They should be uh, taken off profits, that sort of thing, um, which I agreed with. But then she also talked about green bonds and everyone's like, no one cares. And that's a policy that her and Starmer apparently came up to with together. And yet she's the one being sacked for this and we also know that Starmer has been wanting to get rid of her for a couple months now so this is his excuse to get rid of her um you know she is awkward she is a bit of an introvert and you know those aren't really insults but when you're in the public eye those are difficult you know I can relate to that she's probably one of the few Labour um, shadow ministers I can really relate with because I understand how difficult it is to be um, an introvert and how difficult it is to be awkward that is one of the reasons why I don't use a camera because I'd be really self-conscious about it so She's probably the most relatable one in that respect. She's very intelligent, but I feel like when you're a politician, you have to be outward. You have to have energy. You know, Rishi Sunak, as much as I dislike the geezer, he's got a lot of energy. You know, he's very good at speaking. From that point of view, she's been great shadow chancellor. And the point is she would have been a very good chancellor, but she hasn't broken through to the public because as shadow chancellor, she doesn't get to decide anything. Her, 
understanding of economics is useful in calling Sunak to account if you can call him to account. She hasn't broken through her message into the public. Because she's not allowed to actually give policy proposals because we know that Labour shadow ministers had to get attack lines signed off. So if they have to get attack lines signed off, they have to also get policies signed off. We know Starmer's hard to get a hold of and he wanted to be uh, uh, credible, radical and affordable. Like you can't be those three things. So we know that Starmer was trying to play a really, uh, give really short kind of ideas and proposals which weren't worth a lot, especially when you have Boris Johnson who's promising to level up everything and build some sort of powerhouse over there and stuff like that. So she was effectively hamstrung by Starmer. You know, Annalise Stodds was, you know, held back by Starmer just like Angela Rayner was to an extent. So yeah, again, these arguments he's making, I just don't understand him. I, I like Annalise Stodds. You know, I didn't think I would, but I think she's all right. The pandemic hasn't helped, of course, but other senior members of the front bench have distinguished themselves, including Rachel Reeves, who's going to take over the role. Now, there's... now I'm not going to get into my massive disagreements with Rachel Reeves, but I really just don't like her. So, A lot of people in the party who are looking at this as a, you know, a, a, oh, where are they in the party? Is it a win or a loss? So what they're looking at, Dodds, who's on the left of the party, is being removed from the role, a very senior role. Rachel Reeves, who's not... Uh, on the le as far on the left at all, she's more centre left, is being given that role. And I mean, that is a big loss for the party, having someone who's more centre left, um, arguably more centrist, given some of the stuff she said, that is a loss for the party in terms of policy, because if the Labour Party is elected and she's the um, Chancellor of the Exchequer, she's not going to be as progressive as she should be. I mean, that's not a hard one to figure out, Phil. And, um, and they're going, oh, no, this is a loss to the left. No, no. All of these people want a Labour government. All of these people... Again, you know, so do myself and Tony Blair. That doesn't mean we agree on a lot of things. The only thing we agree is the Conservative Party are bad and need to get rid of. So, you know, this this argument, you know, what Phil is really pushing for is kind of unity and all this, you know, hand-holding and all this stuff by the looks of things when, you know, some of these people, um, they're not good human beings. Rachel Reeves, I don't think, is a good person. You know, she said a lot of horrible things. She's praised some not good people. So, again, this argument, you know of, you know, this broad church and stuff like that. I'm, you know, I, I don't have a massive problem. You know, I wouldn't have minded someone like Ed Miliband, for example. I didn't agree with all of his policies, but I'd rather have Ed Miliband in than David Cameron at the time, or even Ed Miliband now. You know, I wouldn't mind having him as prime minister instead of the Tory party. I understand that. I'm not an idiot. But the arguments he's making, especially when it comes to the um, the kind of the way the Labour membership specifically will look through it, you know, the Labour membership being very left wing, we'll see it as a loss. And that's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with seeing this as a loss because it is. People are working for a Labour government. Rachel Reeves was absolutely brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. We need someone who will hold Rishi Sunak to account. And if Boris Johnson's removed and Rishi Sunak becomes Prime Minister, whoever is the next Chancellor. Rachel Reeves tore Michael Gove apart last year. And that's what we need. Um, I think she'll be absolutely brilliant. In fact, given that the local elections... Once you look at the full results that actually show progress, like I said, I've actually, if the, if the infighting can just calm down a bit, I've got a good feeling that we could be looking at the first female chancellor that the UK has ever had. I mean, if Annalise Stodds was there, she would have been the first female chancellor. So, you know, he talks about the infighting and stuff like that. That's important. It has to stop. But at the same time, Starmer can't keep making stupid decisions and he has to actually put policy proposals out. That's how you stop this. Now, as for Dodds herself, it is harsh, like I said, because, you know, she got everything right. Everything she... she... She really didn't, and not all of it's her fault. She said was right, it just wasn't breaking through to the public. Because she offered no actual solutions. But Labour cannot afford to be sentimental. She's incredibly intelligent, loyal party MP, and she has replaced Rayner as chair. Now... So when, you know, we see this, you know, she's incredibly loyal. OK, so out of these four people, you know, we know which one was sacked, Annalise Stotts, the one who's going to create the least problems because she is loyal and I feel like she would be too friendly to create a problem. But we know Nisa Landy didn't go because she would have created a massive stink. She has some clout within the party, especially amongst the kind of um, centre-left of the party. John Ashworth, I like him. I think he's quite popular within the party. Uh, I don't know who Nick Brown is. So when we look at these four here, Raina's not on the list because she was already gone, I think, at this point. Um, she should have been gone at this point. But you can see, out of the four other people he got rid of, he chose Annalise Stars because she was the one to least likely create a problem. 
Um, so again, you know, it shows you how cowardly Starmer is and how Phil just, in my opinion, just isn't seeing it. That will suit her better. Yes, it's a demotion when you look. How do you know it's going to suit her better? What, how do you, how well do you know Annalise Dodds? That, you know, someone who is a, a, an economist, someone who has knowledge about the economy will be better at campaign coordination. Like, how do you know this? Did it like that, but it will suit her better because it's a role that involves internal party matters. She's well respected in the party. She, she was so respected that she was demoted despite the fact that she had done nothing wrong, according to your own account. It doesn't have a high public profile, even though she's been shadow chancellor for a year. The role... I mean, she's only been there for a year. So isn't it a bit unfair to judge her? Like, you said it's unfair to judge Starmer, no? Is that not unfair? It doesn't require major public engagement, beyond maybe doing the odd interview now and then. So her intelligence, drive and personal popularity amongst people she knows, because that's what she's got. She's, she's popular amongst people who know her personally. She doesn't have that charisma that breaks through to the public. A little bit like- And yet Starmer chose her. Theresa May, by all accounts, Theresa May was personally popular within the Conservative Party, but she didn't have that charisma that brought people on board, which is why she made such a hash of the 2017 general election. That's a good point. You know, like I've said, Annalise is a bit, she looks like she's an introvert. I don't want to say she is because I don't know her personally. Um, she does look quite awkward. Um, so, you know, get, you know, moving her on into an internal role isn't the bad thing. But the fact that Starmer didn't kind of see that and understand it is a bit sus, to be honest. So does... Especially when you saw what happened with Theresa May as well. This could be put to much better use as party chair, where you're dealing with Labour MPs, not so much the public. And now that's not the full extent of the reshuffle, even though... You know, there wasn't much, there weren't many changes, but these were the... Yeah, because he knew if he got rid of certain other people, they'd create a massive stink and it would create problems. The key moves. And every single one of them, I would say, is moving someone to where their skills will be put to better use. Rain has got a promotion, Reeves has got a promotion. They're both very, very good at getting their message out to the public. Again, Don if he wanted to promote um, Rainer, why did he sack her? That's the question. God's not so good at getting the message out to the public, so she's been given a role where actually dealing with Labour MPs is the key issue. And that's what Labour need to do. So we All right, it's enough of this. Um, I did find this cool meme which explains it quite well, and that's the, Andrew, uh, that's the Andy Burnham thing where, which explains that he can't support this. He did not support this decision, and chances are, if Rayner had still stayed um, sacked, then you know Andy Burnham would have been asked about this, and he would have created some noise about it. That's the reason why Starmer brought her back into the party, to keep her happy, to stop her briefing against him. This, this, someone made this meme, uh, Prince Philip, um, I found it hilarious. This, you know, this is from The Simpsons, this is uh, 22 short films about Springfield, I think it is. It's like, good lord, you sacked Angela Rayner. No, 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 I gave her a new job. A new job at this time of year, with, these resu with this result, and these polling numbers? Yes. May I see it? No. So, yeah. <laughs> he's saying it's a promotion but he did sack Angela Rayner like there's no denying that um, and I don't understand why he's playing defense again if you want to see the uh, quote let's see if we can find it you know she did not deny being sacked but she should have been given you know she's happy that she's taken a more front-facing role and it does show you the lack of Starmer's ability to do leadership that you know if you want to look at someone who's great at leadership Sir Alex Ferguson was pretty good where he got rid of people who he saw as um, undermining him he got rid of David Beckham amongst other people that he saw as undermining him you know that did impact the the club but the club came back you know you can always find new talent within the Labour Party there there are people there who are intelligent what Starmer did was very cowardly because he tried to get rid of Rayner. She created a stink by telling her friends and they leaked it to the press. Twitter exploded. You know, other other senior um, members of the Labour Party, like Andy Burnham, said, look, I can't support this. Um, next day, Starmer, you know, tells her, look, we'll give you a promotion then. You know, we'll keep you happy. I kind of wish Rayner didn't take it and, you know, started telling us what the hell's going on in the party. But at the same time, I get it, you know, unity is important to an extent, but not to the point where it damages the party. But we know for, for a fact that she was sacked. So the argument that Phil's making is very disingenuous for the entire time, saying that, oh, you know, there's no issues here. Clearly, Starmer's ready to throw these people under the bus. Um, you know, Annalise starts a person he's wanted to get rid of for months. Uh, Lee Snandy, someone who ran against him in the leadership election. This is a very Stalin move when Stalin got rid of Trotsky because Trotsky was a leadership rival. So, you know, maybe I give him credit there, but he didn't actually get rid of Lee Snandy.
you know, not in the way that you know Stalin got rid of Trotsky, but point being is that you know if he wanted to get rid of Nisa Nandi because he thought she was disloyal, he should have done it. Um, John Ashworth, again, I have no issue with John Ashworth, and I don't know who Nick Brown is, but Starmer didn't actually make these moves, and this person's um, intel seems pretty legit, especially since this was one of the people who were talking about um, uh, Rayner being sacked as well, and we know for a fact uh, Rayner was sacked. So the arguments that Phil has made, I want to be as kind as I can be, but I feel like he was very disingenuous in his video. Um, he's, he doesn't want to see infighting. I don't want to see infighting. But when things happen, you know, I'd rather things are more in the open so we can actually see what the hell's going on. And that's the easiest way to reform the party. Yes, it impacts the public when you don't do things behind closed doors but when you make stupid decisions you have to be called out for those stupid decisions just like when you make a video which i would say is misleading you need to be called out on that so look i'm going to leave it there you know this isn't i don't want anyone to see this as an attack on a uh, phil a different bias but point being is that i saw this video and i just got incredibly frustrated that a guy who is intelligent as he is and has a platform as big as he does is deciding to you know, kind of be misleading. I don't know if he's doing that on purpose or if it's, um, you know, this is his genuine opinion here, but I don't think he's right. And therefore, you know, when I see something like that, I feel like I have an obligation to my audience to tell you what I think is, um, you know, to give my opinion and give my analysis. Where And if, if you think I'm wrong, if Phil thinks I'm wrong, cool. You know, you can respond in the comments or uh, respond in a video. You know, I, I don't mind either way. But what I, I do want to see is I'd rather have a discussion with him or anyone about this. I'm, I'm open to that. Um, but look, you know, you let me know what you think in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.